Yoga, white supremacy. My name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Let's get right to it. Yoga. It is through posts like this that white women are killing yoga purely for their quest for perfection. To a white woman, perfection means a key to happiness, your key to success, and the key to your very existence. You have to have the perfect hair, the perfect clothes, the perfect grades, the perfect nails. And then you bring this competition for perfection into the yoga room, into your yoga practice. But did you know that this quest for perfection is rooted in white supremacy in a culture and society like North America's? If you take a look at what yoga actually teaches, yoga teaches that there is no such thing as perfection. According, there is a Hindi word called sindishti, and it translates to perfection in the English language, but it doesn't mean perfection. It actually means to complete something with satisfaction. So decolonizing your yoga practice actually means to embrace the fact that your yoga practice will not look pretty. It will not be a performance. And when BIPOC yoga teachers call you out on your quest for perfection in yoga, if you are truly an ally, you will listen and you will accept that your quest for perfection is killing yoga. So it's time to brace him. BIPOC, right? But you're wondering what that means. BIPOC means buy in people of color. This is her YouTube channel. She runs it with another girl who I haven't seen in a while. But here's, here she is right here. So I wanted to go into that perfection thing that she just mentioned. I, I watched quite a few of these videos. Um, and there, some of them are all right. But I mean, the, her main argument really is just that yoga is meant to be this thing and supposed to be this spiritual thing and all these things. And people don't really like her because she's Indian. It's so weird. She has a video and uh, she talks about how people don't like her because she's Indian, right? Why people don't like her and her doing yoga. And then later on, she talks about how India people don't like Indian people, right? She talks about how when India see white people, they treat them good. But when India see India people, they treat them terrible. I don't get it. Like, so do you, she, she, she says stuff like, it's because I'm from India and I'm all these things and I'm of color. But you say your own people don't like you. Once again, I, I like to talk about how we always say that some people are always just looking for some reason to be oppressed. You say your own people don't like you. White people don't like you. Well, then who is supposed to like you? It's like you want people to feel sorry for you in every single case. And I'm telling you, when you watch these videos, that's all you get from her videos is that she's buying a person of color and that the whole world should just be like, oh man, your life is so hard. I'm so sad for you. Well, here we go. Here's um, kind of her explaining a little bit deeper into the um, uh, the perfection thing. This is based off another TikTok, but I think it gives a good explanation of what she was trying to say. So I wanted to give a little bit more context into what my original TikTok was actually about. And let's start with a fun fact. Did you know that the original yoga teacher trainings that took place thousands of years ago took place in 2.3? It's in particular 2.3. It says that ego is one of the biggest obstacles that you will experience that will prevent you from growing deeper into your yoga meditation practice. And if we look at the old world view of what yoga is, which is a way of life, you are not able to grow in life as well. So regardless of where you practice yoga, how you practice yoga, how long you've been practicing yoga, how long you've been teaching yoga, where you have done your yoga teacher training, the moment you believe that you have mastered yoga, you have perfected yoga and your knowledge is perfect of yoga that's not you that is your ego talking so be careful of falling into this trap and always have a beginner's mind about your yoga practice and your yoga teaching so what I got out of that is when she talked earlier about how white women in, have ruined yoga because of their seek for perfection. She's also saying there is no such thing as perfection in yoga. And the fact that you're saying that it can be perfected is what is why that yoga has been whitewashed. You're pretty much saying something about yoga that's not true. 
And that's what I got out of that whole thing and this whole, all these videos I've watched on her. Um, once again, and also, uh, even though I didn't show her friend, her friend is very much the same way. Her videos are very much the same. Um, she talks about how nobody likes, nobody wants to see her because she's a person of color and nobody um, wants to follow. So she, everything she does is a startup and blah, blah, blah. It just, it just gets so kind of, so kind of, it gets so old, man, watching these videos messing up my vocabulary. It's just wild how many people, once again, because they're a person of color, it's like they want people to bend the knee to them. I just don't understand. And I am a black guy. And I just don't understand why. What can, like, how would it help my life if every time I went somewhere and I applied for a job or I did anything, let's say I started up some random flower company, and every time y'all saw me on TikTok, I was like, man, you know, guys, white people... <laughs> They're just terrible people. You know, I'm running my flower shop as a person of color and people don't want to come in because, you know, when they see a person of color running a flower shop, they get uncomfortable. And it's because of the colonization of America, you know, as an, you know, us people who got brought over here, no matter how we got brought over here um, and us and indigenous people, we just um, we deserve to be on this land. We deserve to live this life. And I'm running a flower shop and people just feel like they can't buy anything from me. I know it doesn't have anything to do with my marketing. It's probably because I have no social skills. I'm always talking about how I'm oppressed and people just get tired of hearing that from me. That's not it. It's because when they see my skin color, their mind immediately goes to this person's not white. Why would I ever buy from them? Even the black people that come in, the black people hate the black people. It's just crazy. It's like being a person of color with a person of color, being hated by people of color just makes me feel even worse as a person of color. It's just, that's what she sounds like when it does it. She's like, well, then, then what are you supposed to do? If the whole world is against you, you're screwed. You might as well just stop, you know? And I don't know, man. I'm just so sick of hearing this. But we got to keep it moving. And we got to keep fighting these arguments because they're going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. We see how it's going to shape policies and stuff like that and politics and stuff like that and stuff like that. Why do I keep saying that word? Um, and we're just going to have to keep fighting it, man. But it is a crazy crazy i wouldn't even say it's a crazy world i just think that we are finally seeing what people are truly like when you put them on a camera and give them just a little bit of taste of that fame just give them a thousand followers you're gonna see everybody turn into a different person it just goes to show you also how much people live for this now when fame used to be such a uh abstract thing right so back in the day before youtube instagram twitter and all that you were just a regular person on the streets and you saw somebody on tv you're like oh my gosh you're the best person ever but now that everybody gets that feeling including myself we all get that feeling of being on a camera seeing our face and seeing people comment and people follow it just makes people it just turns into a drug for people to where they just feel like if they're not succeeding it's because something is either wrong with their color because they're fat because they're tall because they're a woman because they have a mustache, because they have a beard. They just think of anything and everything to prove why they can't succeed in what they're trying to succeed in because the whole world is against them. And that's the bad thing that's happened with social media because before social media, you really couldn't blame that because you really had to look inside and say, why am I not an actor? Well, probably because you're not talented in acting. Obviously, some of them have to go your way. There has to be some money involved. You have to live in certain areas. But at the same time, it, it forced people to look inside and go, I'm just not good enough. Why am I not in the NFL? Because I'm not good enough. Why am I not making millions of playing basketball? Because I'm not good enough. Now people get on the camera and they go, well, I'm not in basketball because I once one time said uh, that uh, I'm gay. And that's it. So I know I wasn't good in high school and I was I went to a D3 school and I sat on the bench, but it's because I was gay, I didn't make it. And then you got people who run a business. My business failed, not because I didn't know what I was doing yet. I didn't have much experience. I still have a long way to go. No, none of that. It's because I was black. I was Indian. I was a person of color. And then you get and then you get people who just yeah, and, I, and white people obviously have the same issues. White people will be like, well, it's because I was a fat girl, right? Oh, it's because, well, people, I don't ever hear white people say it's because they were white. Because that's silly. As it is in most cases with any color, any race. But you just hear we pop, white people maybe go more to, I was fat. I'm a woman. Oh, it's because um, they don't look at me as this. Oh, it's because I'm gay. Oh, it's because I like to wear the color purple. It's just anything and everything they can come up with 
people do this all the time for not succeeding. And the only reason I'm pushing this so far with this club is because these ladies are trying to run their own little club. They do their own little retreats. And because they don't do well, as one of the ladies has said before, because they don't do well, they blame it on themselves being a person of color. One of the girls said she couldn't even get any seats. She couldn't even get people to come there. And it's because she was of color. It's like, come on, man. There are millions of the businesses that fail every day. And you act like, oh, man, because you're just failed because it's because you're Asian. Come on now. Come on now. Anyway, I'm out of here. Goodbye.